What would you do if all the files on your computer were suddenly gone? What if your computer crashed or even started on fire? Do you have a backup solution? In today's video, I'm gonna show you an excellent way to back up and store all of your files. Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome to Tech with Brett, where I help tech work for you. So today I'm gonna to talk about a problem that I faced and how Synology was able to help me solve this problem by providing me with this NAS storage. So first, let's start one year ago, I bought a brand new PC to edit and use as my workstation to get everything done. Everything was going great, but after six months, I started to get the blue screen of death popping up pretty much every day when I was exporting my videos to upload to YouTube or whatever it was, um, I was getting this screen where I could not use the computer. Um, I was able to reboot and get it working again, but one day it would not let me do anything. I could not get into the computer and pretty much everything was gone. So luckily with the help of my brother, we were able to get through, um, get everything transferred to another storage drive. He thought he had erased everything, but we were able to get it all back up and working properly. So since then, I've been looking for a solution to be able to back up all my computer files very easily on a different drive so that in case anything happened to my computer, I would still have access to those files. I've also been looking for more storage space so that I could store a lot of those files as some of these videos take up a lot of space. So this is where Synology comes in. So this is the disk station DS1019 plus, which is a NAS storage device. So NAS stands for Network Attached Storage. So as what this is for is you can plug this in anywhere in your home as long as you can connect it to your network uh, or your router with a network cable. And then you'll be able to access this from any file, your phones, your computers, um, tablets, at any time because this is connected to your network. Now it's very secure because it is within your Wi-Fi network, but you can also add all kinds of different security to this. So is how this works is you have all these different drives right here on the front. So this is a five bay solution. You can get all kinds of different models where you have multiple bays where each of these has a different drive located inside. So let me show you what's inside of these. So here I can open up this bay pull this out and here is one of the drives. So here I currently have three 14 terabyte drives inside of the NAS storage and you can add up to five different ones in this one. And then of course, like I said, you can get different models. So very simple, um, mine came with all three of these already installed, but if I needed to, I can just quickly remove this right here, pull it up like that and then it comes with all the screws required to be able to install the drive into here so that it can be used within this NAS storage. On the front of the device, you have the five bays, a power button, a USB 3.0 port, and the status indicators for each disk. And then here on the back, you have the two one gigabit ethernet ports, the eSATA port, the power port, you have a Kensington security slot and the USB 3.0 port. At the bottom of the disk station, there are two M.2 NVMe SSD card slots that will allow you to have more cache storage without occupying any of the drive trays. So the Synology is pretty much its own computing device. It has a OS so that you can go on and install applications. It actually has a quad core 1.5 gigahertz processor it has eight gigabytes of RAM inside. You can have up to 10 drives at once, and it is very quick to write information on this. And now I don't know too much about everything that this can do, but I'm gonna give you a high level of how I have used this. One reason I chose to go with this Synology is because this offers RAID storage. So what that means is that when you are backing up your files to these drives, it's actually going to copy a backup as well to another drive. So if one of the drives fails, it has another copy on the other drive. So if anything were to happen to one, I can easily go in and it would be able to have those files still stored on another drive. So yes, it uses a little bit more storage than um, you're used to having a backup be. So if you want a true backup, you do need to have your backup stored in multiple locations. So this offers that being able to store um, it all on one drive and then it's backing up to the other drives as well. So using this analogy, there are three things that I wanted it to accomplish. The first one was I wanted it to be able to back up my entire PC, very simple, and then go and it, maybe I lost a file, I can quickly go back in and do that. 
The second is I wanted to be able to have a better photo storage backup instead of using an online service like Dropbox where the prices continue to increase. I'm paying for like the two terabyte storage now, but I wanna have all my photos stored on site. And then the third one is I wanna have a network storage file where I can actually go from any different device to be able to access that, whether it be from my computer or a tablet or whatever device I'm using, I wanna be able to have access to a certain amount of files at all time without requiring to pay for any backup storage solution. So now let me talk about how I have found a solution to all three of those situations and how to get those working. First, I wanna show you a few simple steps to get set up. Once you power on your NAS, head to find.synology Dot com. This will allow you to access the online portal for the NAS to be able to get everything set up. Now I'm not gonna go into full details on every little thing that you need to do. There is a great video by lawn.tv that explains all the details you need to know in getting it set up. After creating the Synology account, once you go into the online interface, you will then need to start by creating a volume so that you have different locations where you can actually store the file. So there's a quick setup, or you can customize this exactly how you want it to be used. I just went through the quick setup and um, kind of did the recommended solution so that I could get going quickly. The storage drive was then available for me to go and download applications. It did take another day or so to complete verifying the drive completion. I'm now ready to install the different applications to complete the three tasks that I want to do with this Synology. So first, I'm gonna head into the package center and I'm going to use the active backup for business. So this is a backup solution that will allow me to back up my entire computer and I can go back to different saved files and restore the individual files. So first I'm going to install the application here on the Synology and then I will need to download the companion app and install that on my computer. Then through the NAS application, I went through and created a backup so that I could choose the time and the dates in which I wanted it to automatically backup every day. I then was able to choose which versions I wanted it to keep. If I wanted to keep all the versions or just the last month or maybe the last year of files all accessible through this application. Next, I needed to set up my PC by signing into the Synology with the server address and my username and password. And then I just needed to select OK so that it could have access to the drive to be able to back it up. Here over on the Synology, you can see that it now has access to my desktop and it can go through and back up all the drives that I have on that device. Clicking on my computer, I can see here that it has not created a backup yet. That's because I have set it to start at 3 a.m., which I did when I was setting up the task to be able to do that. Now that the backup is complete, I can open the active backup for business on my PC, and here I can see all the different recent activity in the backup. I can then go to the restore portal where I will be able to access all of my different drives and any information that I may have lost. So let's go into the F drive here and go into the My Smart Blinds folder. So this is a video that I had created a while ago and here I wanna check some files but I actually see that they are all missing. So down here on the bottom, it allows me to go to previous versions of this folder. So I recently did just move a lot of information and maybe I accidentally deleted the files in here. So if I select the 20th, I know the files were there. I can go in and you can see it stays on that same folder. And here are all the files that are now missing in the current backup. So I could go through here. And if I wanted to restore one of these videos, I would select the video and select restore, or I could actually download that. So this is an example of how I now have my entire computer backed up and stored on the NAS so that if I do lose anything, I can go in here and quickly look at that information and restore it so I never lose any files. Next, I'm gonna take a look at how to back up all of my photos to the NAS instead of Dropbox. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually download all of my Dropbox photos onto the NAS storage, and I'm going to do that by downloading this CloudSync application. With this, I'm able to go in and select the specific Dropbox folder where I store all of my photos and have those down directly to the NAS so I am no longer reliant upon Dropbox and I have my own backup on the NAS storage. 
If you choose to use the CloudSync application, I recommend that when you choose the folder of where you want it to download all your Dropbox photos, go into the home category and choose drive and then moments and create a folder in there. Now, if you don't have the drive folder or the moments folder, you will need to go in the package center and download the drive and moments application. So go and do that, then come back here and make sure that you put it here within that. So here I have a Dropbox family photos and then I'm going to select that as the location. That will just help it so that later on, I don't have to reload all of the photos into the drive folder. Then next I'm going to choose the folder on my Dropbox that I want to have sync. So here I have my family photos and I'm going to select that and then select next. Now, just after a few minutes, it's found 7,000 files it needs to download, and I can already access this information via the file station application. And here I can quickly download one of the videos and I can go through and see the other folders that I have. Now you can see that it actually shows 10,000 files that are available to sync. And so it's gonna take some time to be able to do that. Um, once that's done, I will show you the next step. While I'm waiting, I'm actually gonna go onto all of my mobile devices and download the Synology Moments application. This will allow you to automatically backup photos you take on your phone to the same drive that I'm syncing the Dropbox folder to. Once I sign in with my Synology username and password, I then will have the options to be able to backup all photos or backup any new photos and then upload only during Wi-Fi and then here I can enable the photo backup and then it needs permissions to access your library and everything. As soon as I do that, I will see all of the photos that are currently available in the Synology Drive or in my Moments folder. So here this is showing all those and more photos will show up as the Dropbox continues to sync in the background. Within the Moments application, I do have the option to quickly share edit the photo as well as add multiple photos to a new album so I can sync them as well. And there is a bit of AI in the background so it's automatically recognizing photos and you can search for certain types of photos and it will find those. Now it's been a few days since I've let all the files download from Dropbox to my NAS. And so let's go back into the Moments application and here we can see all the different years that I have on here. Now I did find that browsing through this, it was actually very quick to load up the thumbnails once you select a photo, I can instantly share it, download it, or organize it. So using the Moments application is definitely an excellent option instead of having to use Dropbox, so it is all stored within my own network. Now the third solution is I wanna be able to create a folder on my PC that syncs across multiple devices. So if I add something to that folder, it will automatically show up on my other PC in the home. So as what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the drive application on the Synology, and then here it's going to open that drive. So here's my moments folder that has all those photos that we just checked out, but is what I want to do is create this network drive. And as how I did that is I went down here and went to get drive apps now, and then I downloaded the PC version of the application. Once installed, Windows Defender will ask for permissions for you to use the Synology application, so allow access. And then you will sign into your NAS by simply hitting the search button to find the NAS on the network and signing into your Synology account. So next you will have two options. One is where the drive is going to sync on the NAS and then where that folder is going to be located on your PC. So if we open up this drive, here it's gonna show my drive, and then here is where we would choose where we want that network folder to be. So as you saw before, I'm just going to create a folder and I'm going to call it network drive. Now that that folder has been created, I'm going to select okay, and then I'm going to choose where I want that folder to be on my actual computer. So here under users, Brett, then I'm going to create a new folder and call it network drive so that they are kind of in a similar place. So this is kind of how the Dropbox sync works. It's just done all locally on the network. And now we are complete. So here this is going to show you a little bit more about how you can use Synology Drive. So there's going to be a notification in the tray and then you can go and pause the syncing if you want and see recent changes and all of that and you can easily create a shareable link that others can add to the file as well. So here you can see 
this is what is being backed up. So now let's go and add something to that folder. So on this PC, I have my next project I'm going to work on, but I wanna work on it on my other PC. So I'm just going to copy it onto this folder and then it's going to start syncing that on the drive. Now let's head to my other computer and install the drive application as well. So here we are going to go through the same process, but this time the network drive is already there. So I just need to select that drive and then I need to select where I want it to be saved on this PC. And so I'm gonna do the same thing under user Brett. I'm gonna create a network drive folder and select okay to sync it there. Now that the installation is complete, you can see it has added the folder to the network drive and it is already downloading the files that were in that folder that are stored on the NAS. So now it will download and sync the changes between these. So if I add anything here, it's going to show up on my other PC as well. So I have a seamless sync without having to pay for Dropbox or other sync solutions. Now there also is a drive application that you can get on Android or iOS that allows you to see all these files as well. So there I can go into my drive, there the network drive shows up and I can see the folder and now I can either download files from here or I can actually add new files. So maybe I took a few pictures on my phone, I wanna add them directly to this folder. I am able to do that and then once I do that, you can see that they automatically show up over here on my PC, completing the full sync between this drive. I can also just go to the web browser and go to the drive location and I can view these files as well as move them and download them if I need to without having to sync the application. The Synology definitely was able to pass all three situations with flying colors. Of course, there are many ways in which you could accomplish all of those things. Now, one thing I really like is you can take this Synology pretty much anywhere, plug it in as long as you have a network cable. So in this room, I have a network attached cable here to my network in another room. But one thing is the Synology does make a little bit of noise and with video in here, I don't wanna have you guys hear the clicking and stuff in the background. So it is nice that I can just go and plug this into another room and it would still be able to access all those files. So I'll let you hear the clicking a little bit. Um, when it's just sitting there, it's not too loud, but if it's accessing lots of files and working pretty hard, you will hear those drives quite a bit. Now there are so many more things that I have to learn about the Synology, um, but that's one thing I really like about it. So it's very simple to get set up, but if I wanna get a little more complicated and have it do a lot more things, I am able to do that. So if you're looking for a NAS storage solution, the Synology is definitely worth checking out. One of the things that I really would like to do that I'll cover in another video is set up my Plex server on this so that it can access my videos at any time and I can stream those to my mobile device. So if you guys have any further questions about the Synology, please let me know in the comments below. And if you would like to see other backup solutions of videos that I've created, make sure you check out the playlist over there on the side. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.